I bought something new this week. Oh. <laughs> I did it. Finally did it. After five years of seeing this bad boy make some of the best YouTube content that I have ever consumed, help me get through some long winter nights, I finally own it. It smells good. Woo! Roll the intro. Okay, Chris, why oh why did you decide to purchase a five, six, seven year old camera when the Canon market has just incredible cameras that are newer, mirrorless, smaller? The answer is just pretty simple. It's because I wanted it. Like I said, when I first started learning how to shoot photos and, and kind of get into filmmaking and stuff like that, you know, some of the, my favorite YouTubers that I was learning from were shooting on this. Now, if you don't know what this is, um, I should probably say what this is before I talk about it. Uh, it's the 1DX Mark II. That's it. I mean, it's, you kind of can just tell by the look of it. Obviously the Mark III would look about the same. But no, this is the Mark II. And it is the Casey Neistat edition, if you will. Uh, because if you see here, yeah, there's black tape all over the branding, even back here, all over the branding, because I do not want to advertise this bad boy as being an expensive piece of equipment. So someone will get the greatest idea in the world to try to rob me from it. No. So Chris, why did you buy a 1DX Mark II in 2023? I have been looking at this camera for a long time. Like I said before, I've consumed a ton of YouTube content that this bad boy was responsible for. And it's sort of a dream come true to be able to get to a point where I can afford what was then a $6,000 camera and I picked it up for a third of that price. Back then when I was learning, you put this $6,000 camera in my hands and I definitely wouldn't be able to do anything with it to the capacity that I can do today. I'm not gonna go through any specs or anything in this camera. I mean, this camera, like I said, everyone knows it. It's probably the most famous YouTube camera in the world, bar none, in my opinion. But, but yeah, I feel like my skill level has got me to a point where I can now take this beast of machinery and be able to go out and do some real serious damage in the form of creating just a complete bonkery content. I don't really like to buy brand new things like right when they come out. It's kind of a, a rule of mine that I like to wait a long period of time before I kind of settle on a piece of gear and make it my own. You know, I could be shooting on a, a brand new Sony cinema cameras that came out or whatever it is and it just that's not really my style. Like I, I truly want to know, hey, this piece of equipment that I'm looking at that I'm about to make a massive investment into, is this thing gonna last? Is it going to work for the applications that I'm gonna put it through? So these are just a few questions that I ask myself. And I think some people call me crazy for waiting, you know, why would you wait a year or five years to, to pick up a camera? I mean, aren't all the videos of the first few months of the camera coming out not enough for you? Uh, no, not really. You can come out in a week or two or 30 days and say, yeah, this camera is great and whatever. But really, I want to know, is this going to last me for the long haul? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I've been shooting this thing for about a week now. I'm just absolutely in love with just what I'm getting out of it. This right here is actually replacing my, what it would have been my backup, old backup, which is this bad boy here. Again, tape, blocking the branding, but this is the Canon 80D. And I was using this on a big client project about a month ago. And the quality I was getting from it, I just outgrown it. I'm not gonna say it's terrible and bad. You know, if you're someone who's shooting on this camera right now, I'm not gonna say this is a trash camera. 
just my particular use case, skill, application, I've just outgrown this camera. And so I needed a really good, reliable, you know, second shooter and this right here is it. And this actually might, no, this is for sure gonna be now going into the number one spot. And then my EOS RP will now go into the second spot, my everyday carry camera, you know, things like that. Really nice now to have two full frame cameras, even though one's a DSLR, the other one's mirrorless and the trend is moving towards mirrorless. That's great. Uh, I can still absolutely bang out great low light content. Um, the 120p in this bad boy is still the butteriest thing I have ever seen. It's like watching hot cheese just slowly drip on top of a plate of nachos. I mean, it is so smooth, so velvety, and just absolutely scrumptious. Love it. That's pretty much it. It's just some of the reasons why I bought it, the reasons why I waited for it. Um, and if you're someone, if you're definitely someone like me who likes to wait, wants to make sure that every single penny uh, that you have, that you're gonna put into this gear is gonna be worth it. Um, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad at all. I mean, that's, I think it's smart shopping to be perfectly honest. Um, I do a lot of research into what I buy. I wanna make sure that, can I see myself using this piece of equipment for five, six, 10 years, I mean, truly. So if you've been on the fence about buying a piece of gear because you've just been looking at it and waiting and stuff like that, uh, a couple things to keep in mind um, would be to just think about, hey, is this camera too much for me? Like, does my skill, does my application, is, is this camera overwhelming? Because if you look at a piece of tech, if you look at cameras and you go, okay, well, the price is overwhelming, then A, it's most likely gonna be too expensive for where you are at at this moment. And then B, it, it does, does the camera itself just overwhelming the buttons, the features. Am I just like, it, it, does it just, if it freaks you out, then you probably aren't ready for it yet. And that's okay. I'd say whatever gear you have now, whatever camera you're using now, just use the heck out of it. Just create as much content you can on it, drive it into the ground. And eventually you're gonna get to a point where, like I did with this guy, is, you know, just you outgrow it. Your eyes start to see okay, well, the quality is not exactly what I can envision in my head for, you know, what you're doing for your own art and, and for, you know, clients as well. It's okay to wait and it's okay to use older technology. Hey, if you like this video, uh, hey, it's YouTube. You know exactly what to do. I don't have to spell it out for you. And I'll see you all in the next one.